Hi Michael, for this next part we are going to cover the page builder that's on the site. So how to edit these various pages, how to set up, you know, columns like this, uh, custom headlines, some of these custom elements that we've got on here. Uh, we'll probably end up breaking this into a couple of pieces. I'm not exactly sure where those breaking points will come, but let's, uh, let's work through it here together. So um, when you're on the on the back end of the site here, you would just come to um, pages, and then there's a list of pages. Also from the front end of the website, as I think I mentioned before, whatever page that you're on, let's say you're on the elementary page, you can do it this way. So you can say edit page. Um, I like to have <clears throat> a tab open for the front end and the back end right next to each other so that I can easily click back and forth and see what my my edits are as I go along. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at some of this stuff here. So uh, you can see here that these these th these items on the back end correspond in a certain visual way to what you're seeing on the front. So we see private elementary math tutors, English and writing tutors, and if we scroll down here, that's where those things are. So it's showing you the columns here that correspond to the columns on the front end of the website. Uh, you can see that some of these elements are different than others. So this is a custom heading and this is a, a text block. Uh, as you hover over each of these elements, you can see you get this little four way movement thing. So you can click and hold and drag on these things to move them, move their arrangement within a block, or you can even move them to another block if, they, if you want to. Um, right up here, you can see where this, this fractional relationship between the columns can be changed. So um, in this instance, I don't think we'd want to, but if we wanted to make this one wider and this one more narrow, uh, we could easily just come right over here and instead of half and half, we could change this to two thirds and one third in order to change the, the relationship between those columns. You can also see the other options here are to edit the item. So if you want to edit this headline, you just click on the pencil. And we get the text that you can edit right here. Same with the text block. You can come right here and click edit on that. And as with the blog that I showed you, you know, you've got some very basic uh, word like options for doing alignment bullets numbered uh, bold, italic, etc. Uh, sometimes I don't know why this bottom row of items will disappear here and it'll look like that. This is what you click, this toggle, toolbar toggle, in order to show the extra options. Um, yeah, you can change the text color. I wouldn't suggest going crazy with that kind of stuff. It makes it hard to read, um, but but you can do it. So you can highlight some text here and and choose a color from the palette, or you can put in a custom color here if you can uh, do the hex code for it. Also covered this in the blog video, but we'll mention again, of course, that uh, you can add links here. So um, you can highlight some text and then come right up here to insert link. Uh, I highly suggest using this link options tab right here. And then if you're linking to something external, uh, suggest that you go to that page actually first, whatever that might be, even if it's something as simple as Google, that you go there and then you copy that link. It just reduces the likelihood that something's gonna be incorrect. Uh, you insert that in there. And then if you are linking to something external, you click this open in a new link tab. If you're linking to something in, the, in your own site, you can just find the page or the post right here and click it and it will write the link for you. And in that case, you don't want to check this box. Uh, on occasion, I've had people that come from a, you know, a print background, which probably is what most of your stuff is based on. And they'll get caught up on something like this, like I don't want this widow here, uh, one word on a line. And so they'll go back in their text and insert manual returns. But 
it's important to remember that this is a responsive document, so it's going to respond to the width of the screen that it's appearing on. So if you were to put an, a return in there based on how it appears at this width, then if you respond further, then this would now be on a separate line down here. So don't uh, don't do those kinds of things uh, based on the view that you're getting for one particular width. If you're copying and pasting from a Word document uh, or another source into the website, I highly suggest that you use this paste as text option. And that way you're not unintentionally bringing in other fonts. Uh, you know, it will, um, the website will convert some of those things from Word or other websites It will pull in CSS styles, colors and stuff that you may not see in the edit view. And then once you publish it, you'll end up with three different colors and three different fonts on the front end of the website. So if you just choose, click this paste as text button, it'll strip out all of those things from, from the text, all of those formatting options that, that might not be visible easily until you publish it. So not only are the um, individual block elements here movable, but also the entire row. You can see you have this similar option up here. You can drag these items above or below one another so you can change the relationship of the rows the order of those and also these entire blocks so you wouldn't have to let's see if you wanted english writing tutors and history and learning on the left and elementary science and private elementary on the right you wouldn't have to move each of these items over here and each of these items over here you can literally just grab on this block and flip flop where those appear as well so this that you see up here is what we call the H1 for the page, the main headline for the page that Google is looking at uh, in order to figure out what the subject of this page is. It's looking at the keywords in here that people search for uh, to figure that out. Um, that's what's here, right here is where you enter that, that headline. So if you're making a brand new page, it seems unlikely that you're going to be doing that right away. but if you were to make a new page and you call it something and you don't put anything here, this is what it's going to use. That's why this says override page title so that you can give the page a simple name like elementary school and then still put a, a headline in here that's much longer, excuse me, and includes all of those keywords that you might want. And then all of these other headlines as you go down the page need to be H2 or something larger. So you can see here that this one, uh, Oh, this one is just a, a paragraph tag, uh, but here we have an H2 um, for those. Any of the other ones need to be H2s or H3s going down the page. I think that's probably enough for now for this video. Uh, it's already at eight minutes long, so I'm going to stop this one here, and then in the next video we will cover, you know, how to do some of these more... Um, custom items, you know, these items here, like text over the top of a picture, how to add this color in the background, how to add some of these things like the review and form feeds uh, as well. Thanks.